Welcome. So now we're on to our last type of transformation that we're going to be learning about in this series of lessons. And that is a rotation. So rotation is an isometry. Remember, isometry means the size and shape does not change. That turns a figure about a point. The amount of turn is in degrees. The direction of the turn is either clockwise or counterclockwise. So here we have an arrow that was rotated 120 degrees clockwise about point P. So point P here is our point of rotation. And I see a lovely spinning ball of death. And hopefully that will stop. I have no idea if it wrote anything. Point, there we go, of rotation. And um, from, let's use a different color here, from here to here, that would be the 120 degrees. And eventually you'll see, I think, there we go, the little mark I made. All right, so that would be 120 degrees. All right, so now we have a heart that was rotated, excuse me, 160 degrees clockwise about point H. So now point H here is the point of rotation. And then this right here would be 160 degrees. So when we're um, stating our transformations, we always need to be specific, right? We can't be vague terms. It has to be clear enough so somebody could actually complete the transformation, right? So when we reflect, um, we have to state the line of reflection. Uh, for a translation, we have to state the direction and distance um, using a vector or coordinate notation trying to get rid of that box here. And for rotation, we have to state the point of rotation, we have to state how many degrees, and we have to state direction. All three of those things must be in um, your rule for a rotation. And there we go, rotations are turns, so a rotation is a transformation that turns a figure about a fixed point called the center of rotation. Rays drawn from the center of rotation to a point and its image form an angle called the angle of rotation. All right, so the angle of rotation is an angle created by correspond a, a pair of corresponding points on, um, on the two figures. And it doesn't matter which one, it'll have the exact same angle of rotation and the point of rotation. And we're actually going to uh, learn how to construct the point of rotation and the angle of rotation. Right? Um, so properties preserved under rotation. Right? So you need to know the properties that are preserved and the properties that are not preserved. So distance is preserved, lengths of segments are the same, angle measures remain the same, any parallel lines remain the same. Collinearity, points stay on the same line. And the perimeter and the area of the figure stay the same because this is an isometry. Things that do not, that are not preserved. Properties not preserved under rotation. Orientation, the figure is turned. It is no longer facing the same direction. That's what orientation means. And under position, you have this in your notes at the very top of the page, at the very top of the last page. And then for position next to that, I want you to write, X and, that's a little symbol for and when it comes up, or Y coordinates. Right? So that's what we mean by position, uh, X or Y, X and or Y coordinates, right? If we're on a coordinate plane, right? If we're not on a coordinate plane, then it, the position would still change. But you might be asked something that changes on a rotation, and what's listed is not position. Maybe it's x and y coordinates. Right? So then you know position and x, and x and y coordinates are exactly the same thing. All right, so we're going to look at some rotations, and I'm actually going to construct one of them. All right, so here we're going to have a pentagon um, that is rotating 
in the given direction and a given number of de degrees around the point of rotation. 90 degrees is a nice easy one. Even if this were not on a coordinate plane, right, we could still do a 90 degrees, 90 degree rotation um, by creating a perpendicular bisector. All right, so here we have our 90 degrees clockwise rotation. Right. So notice that I like to think of it, you know, you be, don't think it, it's, so you have to be careful that you don't confuse rotation and reflection. Right. So you notice it's not flipped around, right. it's just going around in a circle. So this point here, which kind of looks like the, you know, the top of the figure to me, at least it is if it's facing that way, notice right, that it always just kind of stays in front. Right. It's like that X is leading the way, or that point is leading the way. Right, and so that's 90 degrees, and that is clockwise. Same direction as the hands on a clock. And it's about that point there. <laughs> that's in the center. Here we have 180 degree counterclockwise rotation. Uh, it's the only, 180 degrees is the only rotation that it really doesn't matter whether you say clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, so counterclockwise, we're going opposite the clock. However, if we went 180 degrees clockwise, so this right here is 180 degrees clockwise, notice you end up in the same location. And so if you leave off counterclockwise or clockwise on the 180 degree rotation, uh, that is okay um, because you end up in the same place anyway. Um, all right, so let's look at another one. Right, so notice what this one looks like, right? So again, one of the last thing. So if that's that point is leading the way, notice where it is, right? So it's going to lead the way. It's it's not a reflection, although you could create um, this particular transformation using a reflection. We'll talk about that. And then here comes the next one. This is the one I was going to do a construction on. So. Uh, we were going to be rotated, the f rotated the given figure about the given point, the degrees and direction indicated. All right, so right now it has not rotated at all. all right, so we're going to do a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. And actually, if I do a perpendicular bisector, come on, compass, come join us. Um, it will be, oops, not the 180. You may stay there. So by the way, my compass over here, or um, not compass, protractor over here while I'm trying to move my compass. I'm on compass. Any day now. Um, notice it shows clockwise and counterclockwise. And notice that the numbers are reversed depending on whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise. So you end up in the same, oh, that's just not moving. Whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise, there we go. You end up in the same place. Right. Whoops, somehow my page changed. Let's go back to the one I was on. Here we go. Although my 180 hasn't moved. There we go. All right, so if you go 180 degrees, it doesn't matter which direction, you end up in the same place. All right, but notice that 30 degrees counterclockwise is the same as 333, or excuse me, 330 clockwise, right? So you can see that uh, 360 is a whole circle. Right? So if you, if, you don't, if you don't rotate at all, if you rotate 360 degrees, you end up in the same location, but you have two different rotations, whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise, that, get, that uh, leave you in the same spot. All right, so let's do a little construction here. And it's a good little review of perpendicular bisector. All right, so I do want to rotate around that particular point. Um, and so because I want it to be around that particular point, I, oops, I did not intend to do that. I do need to create a segment, all right? So I can't just use the endpoints of this segment because I don't know that that's necessarily the midpoint. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, all right? So we want to do a perpendicular bisector. All right, so I'm going to create a segment first, all right? So I just... I have an arc there, and so notice this is going around a circle, right? So both arcs, where those arcs intersect, come on, 
end, you know, here we go, where the arcs intersect, the segment here are the exact same distance away from that center point. All right, so from there, we're going to do a construction, and I really have to come around this way. Otherwise, the part of the compass I really need is off the board. All right, so now we're going to open up the compass. Of course, I'm going to turn this around so it's facing the same direction as the line. We're going to open the compass more than halfway. Right? And I do the arc above and below. So here's the side. You know, I'm going to do it a little bit larger. Sometimes I just don't make my arc large enough. Right? And then I'm going to come around and do the same thing. Right? So I've marked that off. Notice, so those, those distances from where my compass point is to those arcs represent radii. And we know they're congruent because they're radii of the exact same circle. Right, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to change the compass in any way, shape, or form, except to move it to the other arc. And of course, turn the compass around. And I said, turn the compass around. There we go. All right, so I didn't do anything else, anything else different. Still the same opening, All right? So that means I still have arcs that are the same distance away from the arc that intersects the segment. There we go. We're almost done. There we go. All right, so, and it looks like, well, so maybe that point was a midpoint, but now that point is definitely a midpoint for the segment we created. Right, so we need a line tool so we can draw a line between those two. There we go. Let's see how off this line is going to be. Oh, pretty off. That's okay. We'll move it in the right spot. All right, so now notice that my line um, is intersecting both the point in the middle there, that point of rotation, right, and the two arcs. And so we've created a perpendicular bisector, right? So I'm going to rotate that triangle now 90 degrees. Unfortunately, I've got an extra there. All right, so here goes our 90 degree rotation. So one way you can rotate 90 degrees, whether it's on a coordinate plane or not, uh, is to, and i got to be careful, I think it's the green one that's going to rotate it, uh, is to do a perpendicular bisector construction. And, well, let's say I cannot manage to rotate this in a circle, however, we know where it goes. Right? So if you were doing this, um, this rotation, you would create your perpendicular bisector, right? and you would just draw your figure in the same spot, right? in, the, in the correct spot. Right? So there's a 90 degree rotation, right? and so that perpendicular bisector tells us where 90 degrees is. Right? So that is one way you can do that, and you can do that on a coordinate plane, it's a lot easier, right? because um, you don't even need to do a construction, right? You can do, you can create a, um, a coordinate grid and you've got all those nice perpendicular lines, they're horizontal and vertical lines, right? Uh, that make up the coordinate plane. But maybe your coordinate plane doesn't have very clear lines, then you can do a, a perpendicular bisector. Right, but I wanted to do one construction here for our rotation. I have a couple more rotations here, and I'm not going to do any constructions. We're just going to talk about them. Um, this one would be tough to do as a construction. Uh, it's also tough to do on a coordinate plane. So this is a 60 degree rotation. The only thing that helps me out on this rotation uh, is the figure itself, the hexagon. That's about the only thing that's helping me out um, because of the angles. Right? So uh, this is a regular hexagon. In a regular hexagon, each one of those angles is 120 degrees, right? and so um, the way my those two other hexagons are splitting my third hexagon, which is the one that rotated 60 degrees, uh, is how I can tell that 60 degrees. Right? So this one is a tough construction to do if it wasn't for the fact that this was a hexagon, right? and that's what is going to create that. So, so this right here. is going to be 60 degrees too. Right? So you've got 360 degrees here. The whole angle, the whole angle, so if I come around the other side here, 
there's other 60. The whole angle is 120. The, because the line is cutting that hexagon in half, we know that this part is 60, this part is 60, the leftover is 60. That's the only way I could, I could do this construction, or I do this um, transformation, this rotation. Right? And so this one I did as a construction already. This is 180 degrees, right? So 90 degrees would have put it, I figure, right there. Right? 180 degrees, right, moves it to the other side, right? So it's going to go not on the perpendicular bisector, but on the line the perpendicular bisector is bisecting, right? So that's where that one is going to go, and that one is 180 degrees. I think this is my, might be my last one. If I see a, oh no, I have one more, uh, 45 degrees clockwise. This is also a difficult rotation if it wasn't for the fact that this is a square. Right? And so my whole angle here is 90 degrees. If I bisect that angle, each part is going to be 45 degrees. Right? So that's why we can do a 45 degree clockwise rotation. You can do it with a square. And if, we asked, if we were asked to do it with a triangle, be a little tougher. Now what we could do is, if we look back here on our 180 degrees, if we, buy, if we were able to bisect um, that 90 degree angle, right, that would give us a 45 degree angle. But it's a lot easier with a square, thanks to its angles. And it makes more sense with a square. And that's my last one. So I'm going to end, actually, no, I'm not going to end this podcast. Actually, I almost forgot. I have two more slides. They're just not right here. Hence the link. If you wondered why it said that on it, it's going to link me to my other two slides. And this is, we're going to do a construction here. But this is an easy cheesy lemon squeezy construction. We're going to find the angle and direction of rotation uh, for this particular figure here. And you don't have this one, you have the next one, right? So here, um, all, here is our, um, the steps for finding the angle of rotation. You need the point of rotation that's given to us, right? So for the point of rotation, we're going to create the angle of rotation using a straight edge. It's the only thing we need, right? So no other construction tools needed. I'm going to use a line tool, and because all the lines are already black, I'm going to change the color of my line tool to something else. How about pretty purple? Right? And that thing is supposed to go, but that's right. All right, so using a straight edge, you're going to connect any pair of corresponding points to the point of rotation. It does not matter, by the way, which points they are. Matter of fact, I'll show you that. I'll choose C now. So C in E, and where are you, C prime? C prime and E, right? It is the same angle, right? You can kind of see that it is the same angle. It doesn't matter which two cores, which correspond, pair of corresponding points you use. I would really like to get rid of, there we go, that, that thing there, All right? So I'm going to choose one pair of them. Uh, it really doesn't matter which one. I think I'll probably choose... Oh, oops, I forgot to put the line tool away. I think I'll choose the one that's not going over the figure. So I tend to choose the closest two points, just because then the lines are not going in the middle of the figure. Right? But it does not matter. Whichever two you like is fine. Just make sure they're corresponding points. And so then we're going to... I'm checking... I don't, I don't have the notes on this one, on yours, um, the steps I have up here in your notes but we're going to put it in your notes on the next page. Right, so on this one, you're just going to follow along. And actually, it will be easier if you write it from there because I don't have all the steps. So I would like you to add this to your notes. You got a little bit of space there um, next to the, you know, in between uh, the next construction and uh, that coordinate plane there. So do put this in your notes. Don't worry about this thing here. And actually, the answer to that question, uh, I just had d e d prime, 
and I have D E D prime there, and I had angle C E C prime, it, and it doesn't make any difference to whichever one you like. I just kind of liked the one that's there. All right, so what you're gonna, those are your steps there. You're going to match your corresponding points. You only need one pair. Pick any pair, and you're going to um, draw a segment to connect the point to the point of rotation, and a segment to connect the corresponding point to the point of rotation, and make sure you use a straight edge. Right? This is not an eyeball. It. I have to use a line tool. And now is the one time you're going to use a protractor to find the measurement. All right? So, come on. And if only my protractor would move. Oh, it's moving. Not in the right direction or the right way, but it is moving. Now, sometimes my protractor here is a bit persnickety, to say the least. But I think it is going to be kind to me. All right, so I use a protractor. You need to put the, cent the vertex of your angle on that center point, right? and any side along the edge there. Right? So here's the edge of the compass. I chose it to open it this way, which is fine, because otherwise my compass is upside down. Uh, and literally upside down. If, I, if my angle opens this way, you're going to read the compass this way. So zero needs to be the starting point, right? So zero is, is where I'm looking. So I'm looking at the top numbers there. If my angle opened the other direction this way, okay, I'd be looking at the bottom numbers. And I'm just going to erase that because I don't need it. All right, so let's take a look here at my compass, and if you just follow it along, if I write on my compass, it gets all upset. So I'll point to the number, it starts moving. All right, so it was supposed to be an arrow. All right, so if you're following along with my compass there, do uh, you see the 50 degrees? Maybe you have to make it bigger, I don't know, but right there where the 50 degrees is, that is, the met, that is my angle of rotation. So I'm gonna write it over here angle of rotation equals 50 degrees. Right, and what type of rotation is this? Right, so our angle of rotation is 50 degrees and we need a direction. Right, so this is the pre-image and this is the image. Right, and the, comp the uh, figure is rotating counterclockwise, opposite the clock. Oh, that's a funky looking W, but I think you can read it. Right. Let's do one more. It's the one in your notes. Later on, I'll get rid of all those extra lines that I don't need. All right, so this is the one in your notes, and some, unfortunately, the uh, their text box there is blocking part of your figure, uh, but you can kind of see where CB is supposed to go. So you can just finish off your triangle if you'd like. Okay. Finish off your, your original. All right, so step one, we're going to connect the corresponding points to the point of rotation. All right, so I need a line tool. I went and grabbed a marker for some crazy reason. I wonder if my line will still be purple. Probably because I didn't change it. All right, so we're going to connect B. It is still purple to our point of rotation. I got to fix that line. And our point of rotation is D, and B prime to D. That's all it takes. All right, and you'll do. And you need to go get a straight edge now to do that with me. You don't need to get it if you want. You can get a protractor and check, right? or you can take for take my measurement here. All right, so that's all there is to constructing the angle of rotation. Ta-da! We've done it. All right, so now all we need to do is measure. One thing you don't want to do is stick your angle in the middle of your compass, right? And then it gets tough to, to, a little tougher to read. Whoops, what happened? I would like a, whoop, not that big. Not necessarily that big, although that is easier to read, isn't it? I should have maybe made the compass on the last page a little bigger. 
All right, so I've got, um, oops, I need to move it a little bit, sorry. Well, I would be good, except that's the wrong point. We need to, oh my goodness, I'm on my last slide. Come on, compass. I don't want bigger. I don't want smaller. I just want you to move. Can we get it there? That is the question. So the compass, I'm trying to move. If I could figure out where to grab it, trying to get it to move to point D. Because that is my vertex of my angle. Come on. Come on, you're so close. So close. There we go. I told you my compass can be persnickety at times. I mean, my protractor can be persnickety at times. All right, now I got to get one side of my angle. It doesn't matter which one. Don't you move. I need you to rotate. There's rotating. It's rotating. Finally, it's rotating. I need to get one side of my angle on the edge of the compass. Whew, there it is. All right, you see it's at zero degrees. All right, and now all I need to do is follow along to where my angle ends. All right, so my angle ends, well, it's a smidge more than 60. If you notice here, it's just a smidge more. I think it's actually supposed to be a 60 degree angle um, and not a smidge more. Let's double check that my center is where it should be. Ah, oh, there we go. My center was teensy weensy bit off because 61 degrees seems really weird. Now you can see the edge of the angle. Oops, I better not mess with it. Right there at 60 degrees. So you don't have the handy dandy writing there, all right? Um, but you can just write in this part here. And you don't need to write in the blue um, since we wrote it in from the other page uh, in, in a little bit more detail. Angle of rotation is 60 degrees. Which way are we rotating? We're rotating this direction, yes. Um, so when you're figuring out your angle of rotation, it's not the, the direction necessarily my compass is going. Uh, it's the direction the figure is going. I looked at the compass first, and then I realized, whoops, did I check with my figure? Fortunately, oops, unfortunately, I can't figure, I can't seem to write the word pre-image because uh, it's hitting the compass. Pre, I mean, protractor. It's hitting the protractor. There's the pre-image, um, is this one right here, ABC. Here's the image, all right, and so we are moving from the pre-image to the image, and that is counterclockwise. All right, and that's, that is the end of my podcast. That took me a little bit longer than I thought it would. Um, in the next podcast, we're going to be doing rotations on the coordinate plane, and you're going to learn some rules for rotations on the coordinate plane. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.